So welcome everybody who's new from last week and who's been here six months or longer. Welcome to the TechSoup orientation for new members and we're hoping to answer some questions for you. I'm gonna show you how you can engage today. My name is Aretha Simons. I'm the webinar producer here. And I would love for you to put your questions in Q&A. We have some awesome team members who will be able to answer your questions as we move through um, all the slides. We are gonna send you the video replay and the slides, because there's a lot of hyperlinks on the slides that I know you'll use. So look for that um, in your email tomorrow. Somebody's already turned on the closed caption, but if you need the closed caption, go ahead and look at the bottom of your Zoom screen and turn on the CC button. I'm gonna turn it over to Nick Finn. He's a Senior Global Director, Nick. I think that's your title. No, Head Global Growth Marketing. <laughs> All right, have a great webinar. Well, hi, everybody. Um, and uh, I wish you good morning from the West Coast, knowing that for some folks, it is already into the afternoon, because um, this is a US wide webinar. Um, thanks, Aretha, uh, my colleague I've been working with for several years here at TechSoup. We're also going to be joined today by my colleagues, Kevin Mulhall and Kelly Garrett, who are going to tell you more about how you can engage with TechSoup human beings. My name is Nick Finn, um, and I am here today to walk you through the essentials of welcoming you to TechSoup. What can TechSoup do for you, and how can we be helpful to your nonprofit? Let's start with the top question, like what is TechSoup? Um, we are a 501c3 nonprofit organization. Um, and as such are probably just like most of the folks on this call, a nonprofit which is always tasked with trying to do more without the same level of resources, for instance, that maybe the government has or that private businesses and large corporations have. Um, we support, as our mission, we support nonprofits working with technology to help build a more equitable planet. It's a broad, big, audacious mission statement, but we do believe that technology can be a powerful tool um, and in the hands of the right people can do a lot of good in the world. Um, and we're here to help nonprofits be part of that picture. How do we accomplish that? There are several ways. Um, one is that we host a catalog of affordable technology products from major brands like Microsoft, Dell, Intuit, Adobe, and many, many more. We'll touch on some of those brands here shortly. Um, we negotiate with these brands to provide the best pricing that we can in the catalog. Um, and another way to think of the catalog is it's really a collection of all the different philanthropic offers that these corporations have put in the marketplace to help nonprofits afford their products um, and to help them use them properly. Um, in addition to the products, the technology products that are available in this catalog, TechSoup has also established a burgeoning area of technology services for nonprofits, which is different than the product. Um, services are here to help nonprofits implement products, choose the right licensing, uh, maintain that product over its life, um, troubleshoot issues when they happen. Um, we'll talk more about services a little more deeply into this webinar, but you'll see that there's a variety of different technology services TechSoup offers um, across a whole host of different areas, and maybe some of them would be helpful to your nonprofit as well. We also, as almost all nonprofits do, create educational resources. Uh, and in our case, it's to help other nonprofit staff build their technology skills, um, become experts on particular platforms, and be able to work with these technology platforms to help their nonprofit advance its goals to execute its mission. Um, and just like most of you, we also deliver grant-based programming um, and in our case, that program is generally aimed at helping civil society to use technology, again, for that uh, audacious goal of building a more equitable planet. Let's talk about some key terms that really matter in the world of tech soup and nonprofit technology. Um, the first is the term qualified or qualification. 
Um, the catalog hosted on TechSoup.org is only available for use by nonprofits. That's what makes it special, is the pricing in there is intended specifically for nonprofits. And before you can order anything from the catalog, TechSoup has to confirm that you are qualified to use the catalog. And that means in the United States that you are a 501c3 nonprofit organization. So uh, private citizens or corporations and other agencies that are not 501c3s are not allowed to use the TechSoup catalog. That's what lets us stay focused on the needs of 501c3s exclusively. Eligibility is another term that matters when you're talking about the technology offers from TechSoup. Um, and what eligibility means is that in some cases, the products in the catalog even if you're a 501c3, those products may be limited to organizations of a certain budget size or organizations that work in a specific mission area. So together, qualification and eligibility are the two terms which help you understand whether your nonprofit is eligible to use a particular offer in the catalog. I've already mentioned civil society, and while we use that term a lot at TechSoup in all sorts of different contexts, not everybody knows exactly what civil society means. So to establish a baseline of agreement on that, civil society is really the change makers, the do-gooders around the world and in the United States who are working in nonprofits, in charities, and in other non-governmental, non-corporate settings. Um, these are the civil society organizations that are working to make the world a better place, sometimes just through local work in their community, sometimes through a global objective that they may have. Another term you'll hear is digital transformation. Um, and really, this is the process of embracing technology, embracing digital technology to enable and improve your nonprofit's functions and its program delivery, executing on its mission. How can technology help you to do that? That's what digital transformation means, leaning into that. And then digital resilience is another common term, especially as we talk to funders who work with a lot of nonprofits. Um, digital resilience is making sure that your nonprofit's technology stack and by extension, your nonprofit itself can quickly respond, adapt, and continue to serve during some kind of external disruption or crisis. Um, those disruptions or crises happen more and more. They can look like lots of different things. It might be a wildfire in California. It might be a war zone in another country. It could be that a natural disaster has impacted a city or an area or some kind of power outage all sorts of different things. Think about the COVID pandemic itself, how disruptive that was to the operations of nonprofits. And so resilience is the idea of being able to continue to operate even in the face of some kind of adverse event like that. Right, so let's go a little dip, bit deeper into the TechSoup catalog that I mentioned at the top. This is where TechSoup holds a host of offers exclusively for nonprofits uh, of technology products um, that nonprofits have been coming to us for years now. Um, the first thing I want to point out is that you can get to that catalog by going to TechSoup.org and literally just clicking on the product catalog button there in the center of the page. It's also in the top nav. When you do that, you come to this page. This is the product catalog at TechSoup. I wanna confirm that folks can still see this on the screen. You'll see a slider just moving across there with several pertinent offers of the day um, and uh, several different logos down here at the bottom. Um, and uh, this is your entry point into learning more about the different offers and uh, brands that TechSoup hosts. From here, I want to go, sorry, clicking the wrong way here. 
I want to go directly to one of the first most popular brands that work with TechSoup and have been a longtime partner of ours and that thousands of nonprofits have engaged with through TechSoup, and that's Microsoft. So um, for some folks who've been in the workforce for decades, you'll remember the old days of Microsoft when you got a CD-ROM and you loaded software directly onto your computer. And of course, you know, now decades later, everything is based in the cloud. Those updates come down to your local machine. Most of your data is hosted in the cloud. So the Microsoft offers have really evolved over time. Um, but let's look at some of the specifics that are available from Microsoft here on the TechSoup catalog. So right off the bat, I want to call out to you that we do have uh, Microsoft Copilot in the TechSoup catalog. Um, this is not a nonprofit specific price point. There is no specific price point for nonprofits on Copilot. This is the market rate that everybody is paying for Copilot at the moment, but it is available through TechSoup. You can manage it through us. Um, we also offer Office 365, um, and th this is the cloud-based version of those traditional Office applications that you're used to working with, Word, PowerPoint, Excel, all of that good stuff. Um, we can advise you on which is the correct level of licensing you might need for your nonprofit, depending on the size of the nonprofit. Um, and we can work with you to help you get those licenses, to implement Office 365 at your nonprofit, to manage it over time. There are other offers also available from Microsoft through uh, TechSoup. Um, there are still older versions of Office that you can get, which are on-prem versions of Office. Um, you can get those for Mac and for PCs. Um, and there are some other more specific items in the catalog. Windows is certainly available through TechSoup. Um, and if you work with some of the other developer tools or service solutions from Microsoft and you need access to some of those products, you can also get those through TechSoup. Microsoft has been a longtime partner of ours. We have an excellent relationship with them. We're always providing them with feedback about what the nonprofit sector needs. Um, and so if your nonprofit is a Microsoft using organization um, and you need some help in figuring out how to best administer that or which licenses you need, or if a new product is in play for you, TechSoup can be extremely helpful on that front. Adobe is another major brand that we host in the TechSoup catalog. And if you work in nonprofit communications, um, if you are a designer, if you work on websites, if you have to manage PDFs, almost anything involving communications, marketing, and public relations, Adobe is likely to be somewhere in the technology stack that you're using often. Let's talk a little bit about what these technology products from Adobe are that are available through TechSoup. Um, first of all, I would highlight Adobe Creative Cloud, which is a specific package of different applications that let you design digital assets, right? So again, if you're a designer, you know all about Adobe Creative Cloud already. That's where you find Photoshop, you find Illustrator, you find all those applications that help you build websites, produce print materials. But Creative Cloud requires a certain level of training and expertise to use. Um, it's not a platform you can immediately just jump into. Uh, I've certainly spent the last 20 years in my professional career learning how to use Creative Cloud. It's always being updated. It's an incredibly powerful platform. Um, and again, if your nonprofit needs access to it, you can get that through TechSoup. One of the newer uh, elements in the TechSoup Adobe catalog is Adobe Express Premium. Um, this is a new offer from Adobe that's been with us for a couple of years now. Adobe Express is a simpler, easier to use graphics and video program um, that in fact we're seeing a lot of nonprofits adopt as the way that they produce social media assets. Um, so if your nonprofit specifically does a lot of stuff on social media, maybe you're doing outreach there, maybe you're generating awareness, or you have some educational materials you're trying to share, um, Adobe Express is an excellent uh, package to look at. 
Um, it has a couple of specific features that I think are super interesting. One is that you can schedule posts ahead of time. Also, as I mentioned, it has video editing capabilities. Um, so if you find editing video maybe a little more difficult than you would like it to be and you'd like to try a different platform that's a little easier, I'd encourage you to take a look at Adobe Express. That in particular is available through TechSoup at the moment for a $0 admin fee. Um, and let's pause for a second on what this notion of an admin fee is. Um, in order to keep the catalog sustainable and, you know, for TechSoup to sustain its own operations, we charge a very modest admin fee as part of the cost of uh, accessing these technology products. Um, but in this case, as I say, for Adobe Express, the admin fee right now is $0. Um, the third offer that folks often gravitate towards in the Adobe catalog is Adobe Acrobat Pro DC. Um, that's a management tool for dealing with PDFs, portable document format. That's something that everybody on this call, I'm sure, has worked with at some point in time. The PDF is something that Adobe practically invented. Um, and so if you need a more robust management of your Adobe PDFs, um, Acrobat Pro DC is a great way to, to be looking at that. All right, moving on from Adobe, Intuit QuickBooks is another huge offer through TechSoup that tons of nonprofits take advantage of every year. Um, and this is a great uh, tool to actually bring back that notion of digital resilience that I was talking about earlier. Um, one of the things that we saw you know, four years ago when COVID took hold is there were still some nonprofits out there who were literally running their books in a paper and pencil format. And uh, as soon as people were not able to go into the same office together because they had to be socially distant, those paper and pencil accounting systems became worthless. You couldn't manage your finances with those systems. Um, and it was just one more reminder of why cloud-based digital platforms are so much better than those old school uh, paper and pencil systems. QuickBooks was probably the most popular accounting package that we offer for nonprofits and lots of folks took advantage of that. Um, if we look at the offers for QuickBooks currently in the catalog, um, all those offers these days are really the online version of QuickBooks. Um, there are varying levels, um, different numbers of users you can have on these different QuickBooks packages. You've got five users here, 25 users here. There is a Mac version as well. Um, and uh, TechSoup also offers services to help you transition to one of these online QuickBooks platforms, if that's something that you want to do. Um, but if you're thinking about a different tech solution for running your nonprofit's books, QuickBooks is without hesitation where I would steer you instantly. It's the most popular thing in our catalog these days. Um, beyond those three brands, there are numerous other brands available in the TechSoup catalog, um, and we just don't have enough time together today to go through every single one of them. So I'm just going to give you this splash screen here with some of those brands on there. Um, a couple that I really personally like a lot, um, you know, Zoom, of course, what we're on right now in our digital platform together for this webinar. That's a big one. Um, I use Asana all the time at work for uh, project planning. Um, let's see up here. Um, AWS is a huge popular one these days um, for cloud storage. Lots of uh, website storage going on in AWS through um, nonprofits working with TechSoup and on and on. Um, really, the best thing is to explore the catalog on your own. Think about what the uh, needs are that your specific nonprofit has. Um, and... Uh, Maybe there's a way that TechSoup can help support you as you try to build out some of that digital stack for your nonprofit. Um, <clears throat> so moving on outside of just the software elements of the catalog, um, TechSoup also provides access to some great affordable hardware solutions that I want to pivot to next. Um, to get to the hardware section of our catalog, you first have to go to the product catalog, which I've got, you know, professionally circled in a red line here. 
Um, and then you just click on that hardware button on the left-hand side of the screen. Uh, that takes you into the hardware portion of our catalog. And let's take a look at what some of those offers are today. Um, so <clears throat> mobile devices are a growing area of the hardware offers that we have available to nonprofits through TechSoup. These can be all sorts of things from um, unlocked Apple iPhones. We've got Apple Watches in there, uh, MIMO monitor tablets, um, and, and all sorts of other mobile devices. If you have field staff who are outside your nonprofit's offices, maybe working with clientele or doing other things, and you need to have some kind of mobile technology for them to work with, this could be a great place to look for some of those solutions. Um, we, of course, provide access to plenty of desktops and laptops. Um, there are lots of monitors available, networking equipment available through TechSoup, security cameras, sensors, all sorts of accessories, printers as well. Um, and again, these are really in the catalog, priced as affordably as we really can. Um, we also maintain really solid partnerships with Dell, with Lenovo, and with HP to provide nonprofits with access to products from them with, uh, with a baked-in nonprofit discount. Um, and there's another area of TechSoup hardware that I think is really important to bring out, and that is um, we are one of the pioneers in providing access to refurbished hardware. Uh, so, you know, technology moves so quickly, the, the speed of hardware moves so quickly that, you know, earlier in the tech revolution, it wasn't uncommon to see a computer that was two or three years old just being tossed because you were already moving on to the bigger, better, faster machine or smaller, I should say, actually. Um, but uh, we also know that that's an incredibly uh, bad environmental practice. It's wasteful. Um, and there are plenty of computers that may not be brand new, but are still completely feasible to use for work product. Um, and so TechSoup helped build some of the early refurbished hardware offers. Um, and refurbished hardware these days is actually a huge business, uh, but we're one of the early adopters and early proponents of um, offering refurbished hardware. Those refurbished units are available through TechSoup at a lower cost than the brand new units. Um, and so uh, in particular, if you're a nonprofit that needs a lot of new machines and you really are needing to figure out how to afford all of that, I would strongly encourage you to take a look at the refurbished hardware offers through TechSoup. Um, it is one of our most popular areas. So beyond hardware and the software products in the catalog, as I mentioned, TechSoup has also been building out um, a set of services for nonprofits um, because we've come to really understand that getting a technology product is really only the start of doing technology at a nonprofit. Once you have that product, there's a lot of other work that comes with it, implementing it, getting it dialoguing with your other systems properly, training your staff on how to use it, making sure that it's updated, whether it's hardware or software, maybe there's firmware updates that need to be applied, managing and troubleshooting that technology through its life. And at some point, perhaps it's time to retire it and replace it with something else. Um, TechSoup has developed a host of services over time to help you deal with some of those issues. So let's talk about some of that now. Uh, you get to the services area of the menu um, by looking at the second item in the drop down there. And there you start to see what some of those are. Um, and let me see if I can get through here to the live site. And we'll take a look at our brand new uh, services overview planning page. We're super psyched to get out there. Um, and we're just going to scroll down and take a look at some of the services that are now available through TechSoup. So um, again, for folks who've been in the workforce for a long time, who may even remember what it was like before you had a website that your nonprofit could use as a communications vehicle. Well, in the modern world, we all know that the most important communications uh, tool or channel that your nonprofit really has is your website. 
You can say what you want to say to your supporters, to your constituents, to the people who work with your nonprofit, for the people who work at your nonprofit. Um, yet at the same time, I've never met a nonprofit professional who feels that their website is perfect and does everything it needs to do. In fact, most nonprofits spend a lot of time talking about like, oh my gosh, if we could only do this on our website, if we could just fix this or fix that or put this up there. Of course, a lot of those issues are related to resourcing, technical expertise. Can you afford somebody to do that work? Um, and TechSoup has for years recognized that nonprofits need help with their websites. And so we do provide access to a host of different website services. Um, it can be very small items from doing small rebuilds to uh, scoping entirely new websites. Um, I want to say up front here to caution you that websites are not the cheapest thing in the world. Um, and these website services are not free. You are not uh, grabbing a product that you can then just um, pay nothing for and get a whole new website. Um, but if you are seriously contemplating how to upgrade your website, make big changes to it, uh, TechSoup might be the ally that you're looking for to figure out how to scope what those changes are, um, work with one of our vendors to uh, implement those changes. Um, there's another large offer through our services catalog that lots of nonprofits take these days, which is to get IT support. Um, and that is through our managed IT services. This is sort of a long-term big picture contract you enter into with TechSoup. Um, and what it does is it allows us to help you manage your entire technology stack, whether it's your Microsoft uh, 365 subscriptions or that cranky printer in the back office that seems to explode if you look at it the wrong way, uh, and everything in between. Um, that's what managed IT services are available for to help you manage that whole thing. And uh, if you really feel like your technology stack is more of a distraction than it is a help, maybe managed IT services is something that you should think about. Um, we've already looked at QuickBooks in the catalog. Um, and of course, as I was saying, like getting a product is really only the start. If you're getting QuickBooks, for instance, you would need to engage in the process of moving your data into QuickBooks. Um, and we have developed a service to help you with that. Um, we offer services around cybersecurity training, which is really important for nonprofits as they bring in new staff. Um, every year we hear more and more alarming stories about what's happened when somebody clicks on an email they shouldn't have clicked on. Um, and uh, the only way to get around some of that is is teaching staff how to be aware of what these phishing emails look like and how to you know, not engage in risky behavior. So that kind of cybersecurity training is a great service that we offer. Um, digital marketing is a huge burgeoning area for, for uh, nonprofits because um, lots of them now need to reach out using the internet as the primary platform to find new supporters, to find new people to serve. Um, if you're not experienced in building digital marketing strategies, we have a service that can help you with that. A lot of nonprofits are using Google ad grants these days, um, but most of them are struggling to use all of the revenue available to them through Google Ad Grants, meaning you have up to $10,000 a month that you can spend, um, but it's tricky doing it. Um, we do have a service to help nonprofits as they figure out how they're going to use their Google Ad Grants and optimize that and use as much of it as possible. Um, if you have a website that's up and running already um, and you're working with Google Analytics, you know that over the last two years, um, Google Analytics has undergone a fundamental change where we've moved from universal analytics to what's called GA4, or Google Analytics 4. Um, uh, universal Analytics has really been turned off now, but if you are still struggling with that transition to Google Analytics 4, um, we have a service that can help you with that. Um, and on and on and on. As you can see, there's a whole host of other services here, and I really encourage you to take a look at some of these services. I bet there's something on this page that really speaks to a need at your nonprofit. I want to say that at the end of this webinar, you will receive a copy of this um, deck with live links in it. 
you'll be able to click through to this page, um, which is only going live on our site today. So if you look at the navigation of the TechSoup.org site today, you wouldn't see it. You can only get it by clicking on the link in this presentation. So you'll be some of the first to know about that. Um, right. Moving on from our TechSoup services, I want to call out two specific things at TechSoup that sort of stand on their own and are a little bit different than the products and services I've just been talking about. Over time, um, TechSoup membership itself has become something that we're trying to understand more and offer more deeply and in a more detailed way. So um, I've already talked about how to become um, qualified and eligible to use the TechSoup catalog. You have to be a 501c3 nonprofit. And there's a process you go through with us to do that, right? You have to join TechSoup at the top right-hand side of the page. You have to enter some information about your nonprofit. And, and if we go through that and we do confirm that your nonprofit's a 501c3 and then it's qualified and edge eligible, Bam, that means that you now have a TechSoup account. But membership at TechSoup is a little bit different than just having a TechSoup account where you can look at that catalog. There are really three layers of it, and I'm going to focus on two of them right now. The first one is called TechSoup Boost. TechSoup Boost is a place where you get access to the TechSoup catalog and services I've just discussed, but there's more to it than that. There's also a whole stream of content that comes with that that helps you with key decision-making elements. Think about the idea that like in the technology world, there might be 20 different branded products that all say that they address the same general area. How can you possibly have the time when you're running a nonprofit to sort through all those options and understand which is the right one specifically for you? We, we try we all try to do that because that's part of what being in the marketplace and running organizations is like. But the content in TechSoup Boost in particular is there to help you make those decisions, to understand better what the tools are that are available to you, which one might be the better choice for you depending on a host of different criteria. Um, Boost also contains some special offers that come to TechSoup from time to time that are outside the, the regular TechSoup catalog. Um, for instance, one offer that's available only to Boost members right now um, is Walmart Business Plus. Um, and uh, that's a offer from Walmart through TechSoup where you can get some additional savings through a subscription service um, to various products in the Walmart catalog. Um, and that's not an offer that's just available through the regular TechSoup catalog. So TechSoup Boost is $99 a year. It applies to your entire nonprofit. So any authorized agent at your nonprofit, if you have a Boost subscription, they would be using the Boost pricing on products that they order. A second membership tier that we have brought in to play is called Quad. Quad is where you would go if you need as much help as possible managing your technology stack. So I think, for instance, there are some nonprofits out there who actually only have one or two staff. They have an executive director and maybe a bookkeeper, and they have to do everything. For those folks, Quad is actually probably the best bet because it's where you get access to the deepest engagement with TechSoup. You'd have the opportunity to actually ask TechSoup staff questions um, and get guidance around different issues or products you might be thinking about. Um, and when you have a Quad membership for your nonprofit, um, I believe it's $200 a month. Um, and you would have 10 people at your nonprofit who qualify, who, who would be able to use that quad membership. Um, it's a pretty exciting area of TechSoup right now. It's one of the newest areas that we're building out, um, but it is a new membership level that I definitely encourage you to take a look at. There are a couple of new things that have been added to the catalog recently I want to highlight here toward the end um, that we just don't have worked into the presentation earlier. 
Um, we have a new offer called TechSoup Consultant Connection, something that we started building some years ago. But essentially, this is a service that's available for free to TechSoup members where you can find a consultant. There's hundreds, if not thousands of consultants out there serving nonprofits in different practice areas from fundraising to digital marketing, how to run your books, what's good management protocol. Um, and uh, it's not always the easiest thing to find these consultants. Um, so uh, knowing that we have hundreds of nonprofits that come through the TechSoup website every day, uh, our idea here is to just help consultants and nonprofits find each other. Um, so if you are looking for a consultant, you know, we're in the early days of getting this really fleshed out. Consultant connection can be a, a helpful tool for you. Um, and then looping back to what I was saying about domain or websites earlier, um, what a powerful communications tool they are. But again, in many cases, lots of nonprofits out there have one, maybe two staff. You have to be an expert in everything. You have to do all the things. Um, and we have found that one of the things that is a real blocker sometimes to nonprofits actually getting a website up at all is that they don't know how to get their own domain, right? So domain being your URL. In our case, it's TechSoup, right? That's our domain, techsoup.org. Um, and uh, we have a new domain name service where we can just help you get the domain that you want to use for your nonprofit. Of course, that opens up a whole conversation with us about what do you want your website to be also, um, and you can work with us on that as well. Now, um, I know that was a lot to absorb, um, but I also want to say that one of the great things about working with TechSoup is that you're not just getting access to technology through TechSoup. You're also getting access to a host of human beings who work with technology and who really care about the nonprofit movement and, and work in it themselves. Um, so now I'm gonna bring to the forefront two different internal teams at TechSoup that you would be likely to work with over time um, and uh, have them share with you how you can work with them best but I wanna be super clear what these two teams are on the front end here. So the first is what we would call the account management group. Some might call it client services or customer services. In any case, this is the team that helps you work with your TechSoup account, right? So you've signed up, you've become a member of TechSoup, you, you've put in your nonprofit's information. But for some reason, something's not working right for you on the site, or you can't seem to access something you think you should access. This is the team that helps you work directly with TechSoup, right? They're not the team that's going to help you answer questions about Intuit QuickBooks. They're not the team that's going to troubleshoot Microsoft Office for you. What they're going to do is help you manage your relationship directly with TechSoup. So that's Kelly Garrett, and she's going to come up here in one second. And then after Kelly's done, you're going to meet Kevin Mulhall. And what Kevin actually does is work more with his team on the technology front. So when you do have an issue with Microsoft 365, something like that, that's where Kevin's team can come to help. So I'm going to turn off my video and Kelly Garrett, take it away. Prompt me on the screen changes and I'll keep everything running here. Thank you so much, Nick. Um, please let me know if my sound is not coming through great. I can always turn off my camera. I find that sometimes helps with these presentations. Um, but been great chatting, chatting with you guys in the webinar chat. I do want to remind everybody that there is a recording going out because I do see that question popping up. Um, recording, transcript, and slide deck will be going out tomorrow. Um, and we do still have that Q&A option in Zoom. Um, sometimes it's a little easier for you to track the responses to your questions, but please keep feeling free to ask the questions in chat or in our Q&A option. Um, so first things first that I would like to go over with our members is how to find information information. So you don't have to take time out of your day to contact customer service. A lot of times um, answers to questions are on our website. Um, we, you just need to know where to go and look. Um, so first place I always tell members, if you've got a question about a product or a service, you know, you've looked through our, our product catalog, you've looked at the categories, you've looked at the, you know, donor partner options, you've 
you've narrowed it down, you're looking at some options, and um, you've got some questions. So first things you want to do is you want to make sure you check out the offer details page or the product page. Um, and that's what we're seeing right here. And so I always like to show off um, the QuickBooks Online Plus. It's one of our most popular offers out there to nonprofits. It's a massive savings, as Nick kind of mentioned. Um, all of our product pages are for the most part set up the same. Um, if it's a product that you can add to the cart and check out, you will see the layout here. It's going to, at the very top, underneath the name of the product, it's going to list who the donor partner is. Intuit creates the product. They donate the licenses. TechSoup facilitates those. Um, you'll see what category it is. So if you're looking for accounting um, software or cloud computing, you can click on those and it'll actually take you back to that category to see whether options are out there. Um, platform, always really important. Make sure that you're getting the PC version. Make sure you're getting the Mac version. Make sure it can work on both versions if, it, if that's what you need. But, you know, you always want to make sure that you're keeping an eye on that since um, TechSoup and our partners have um, fairly strict no refund and no exchange policies. You do want to make sure you're checking all that information before adding anything to the cart. Um, as you scroll down, you will see the admin fee is always listed in bright red. Um, underneath that will be the quantity. So if you need more than one and it allows you more than one, products do have eligibility restrictions, such as how many products from that partner you can request in a year. Intuit, for example, only allows organizations one QuickBooks Online account for the entire organization. That's to cover all your departments, your programs, your initiatives. Um, they don't give out multiple accounts, but they can help you get things set up to work for your organization as a whole. Um, under beneath that, you will see that there are three tabs of information. They are sometimes easy to miss because it is gray on white, um, something we are looking at, um, at improving in the future. But um, these three tabs, you want to make sure you thoroughly reviewed, review all of these. Um, the description is, tab is on the far left is where you start. And it does have a lot of great information, including that no refunds, no exchange policy is listed on those that description tag. Um, and then also it gives a breakdown of you know what's included, links to other information, good stuff like that. So always recommend starting here for product questions. Uh, next slide, please. Um, Another thing to keep in mind is, you know, is this a subscription product? Is it an access to a discounted rate? That middle tab always has a really thorough breakdown of what the offer is really giving you. Um, it can have different names since this is a subscri subscription product where you pay TechSoup an annual um, subscription fee for the subscription itself. Um, that's why it's subscription details. If it's a one-time admin fee, it's just a desktop product, not subscription-based. You'll see something else listed there. Um, usually it's like system uh, requirements, things along those lines. So really recommend going to that middle tab, really reviewing everything. Um, there's a lot of good stuff, like some offers are not available to existing members. So if you've got an account already for that product, or you've got that product installed already, you might have to do a workaround, or you might not just you might not be eligible until you have a renewal coming up, things along those lines. So again, very important to make sure you really read through all of these tabs. Middle tabs usually got a lot of a um, lot more breakdown of information. Perfect. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so something that I have I've been putting in articles into the chat um, throughout this time, highlighting where you can find information like where can I find and edit my association code, um, which is always important. That's how you associate your organization. It's already registered to your member account. Um, there's also information about products. Um, we are starting to flush this out a bit more. Um, we've got an Intuit for nonprofit section. We've got a Microsoft support section. Consultant connections that was mentioned. We've got a section with that with articles. So highly recommend um, always taking a peek at what we've got in there. If the product page and the rest of the website's not giving you the answers you need, it is going to be in that top right corner. You just click help. And it's going to take you to TechSoup support. Um, and that button's always available whether you're logged in or not. And it is next to where the login button is or where you can access your account if you're logged in. Next slide, please. So once you click that pay uh, that help button, you're going to take, be taken to the TechSoup support page. You'll see you can search keywords, phrases, 
product names. Um, you also will see that there's different uh, sections listed here that you can click on. Um, you'll see that I mentioned Microsoft supports listed there, you know, boost questions. And then there are promoted articles for each so that you can see what are kind of our more popular questions. Um, we are constantly updating this. We are constantly making sure that it is relevant. Um, and it's got information that we're seeing members asking questions about. So again, highly recommend coming and checking this out. Even if you don't have any questions right now, after this webinar, my be a good idea just to go kind of poke around you might see me some stuff there like oh i didn't realize that was going on or oh that's really interesting about that product so always recommend checking out TechSoup support uh next slide please um, so Nick kind of touched on this, you know, say you've looked at our website, you've looked at TechSoup support, you've read everything, you've got questions about what you read, you're not seeing an answer to your question, you know, we're definitely here to support you. Um, and TechSoup customer service, primarily we focus on account management, eligibility questions, um, you know, navigating resources on our website. Uh, something to keep in mind is we have a lot of partners. If you go on, on TechSoup.org and you click that donor partner um, drop down list, you will see how many partners we have. And each one of those has their own unique nonprofit program with their own requirements, their own restrictions. They're offering different types of products. Some offer many, some offer one. So it's something to keep in mind that we um, our customer service is not going to be an expert on the product. We have a lot of information that's been provided to us by the partner. So like Intuit has given us a lot of information about QuickBooks Online. Um, we can help with things like, oh, my QuickBooks Online registration link's not working. We got you the registration link. We can get you a new one. We can also help you do some troubleshooting, some basic download installation support, some basic product support, stuff like that. But it's mostly things that have been passed along to us by the partner. So if you're having questions, like you want to know, get into the nitty gritty of how something functions. Um, you've bought and installed, and now you can't seem to launch the program. Um, things along those lines, a lot of times you're going to need to go to the partner that provided the, uh, the product or the service. So you would go to Intuit support for help navigating around your QuickBooks online account or getting some things registered or figuring out why reports aren't reporting, things along those lines. Same with Microsoft. Um, a lot of times, you know, if you're unable to get into your Microsoft for nonprofits account, that's something that only Microsoft's going to be able to help you with because that's their website and their systems. So we can definitely point you to the right way, uh, place to go, but it's something to keep in mind that, um, you know, we are customer service. We are not IT or product support, and we're not necessarily the experts on every single product that we have available since we do have so many because we want to make sure we're supporting the, uh, the sector as best we can. Um, if you are looking for support, do recommend checking out the services Nick went over earlier. There is that link that is right there on the slide. You can easily go to um, text in TechSoup support. If you type in services or resources, there's a really great page that outlines of all, pretty much everything. It's got quad mentioned, boost. Um, it's also got some, you know, how to connect with our Microsoft cloud experts, things along those lines. So again, TechSoup support, I would be going and checking that all the time. Perfect. Next slide, please. So again, you still need to talk, you need to get in touch with us at some point. Um, sometimes it's to get that association code. Sometimes it's like, I have these questions, but I don't know where to go to answer them. Things along those lines. So I do recommend, um, you know, always coming to our how to contact how do I contact, tech, uh, it's a, sorry, how do I contact TechSoup customer service? Um, this is a great place to come because we do put updated oper hours of operations. Um, it does have holiday closures listed. Um, we did just have our live chat slightly changed this week. So there's now a new process of going through the help bubble at the bottom, which I'm going to show you here in a slide, um, the next slide in just a second, but definitely recommend, you know, this is the place to go if you want to get in touch with us. Um, and that will like establish you know, we are Pacific Standard Time. Here's what our hours usually look like. Here's some nuances or some closures that are coming up, things along those lines. We try to be really transparent about that and make sure you guys aren't getting stuck and unable to contact us because we do just only have live chat at this point. Um, and something to keep in mind is that if you are not seeing the ability to get into live chat, um, Double check those hours of operations. Stop and think about, is it is it a holiday? Is it a Saturday or a Sunday? Um, you know, we're not open on certain holidays. We're not open on the weekends. It's a Monday through Friday operation. Fridays is a half day for our chat. 
Um, so just something to keep in mind, you know, is it ours operations? Um, we've also heard from quite a few members that certain um, higher level security filters, um, ad blockers, pop-up blockers, um, server security settings can make it so that the help button doesn't appear. So something to keep in mind is you might want to check your um, browser settings, your server settings, and your, your security settings. Um, if you're not seeing our help button um, or bubble, it should pop up on both the TechSoup support site and also on TechSoup.org. So something to keep in mind. Um, and that's the phrase, that's the exact name of it right there. So you can always type that in and um, you'll should have it pop right up. And it is one of our promoted articles. Awesome. Next slide, please. Um, so this was just kind of showing you again, that's that help button or bubble you should be seeing at the bottom right corner of every page of TechSoup.org and support.TechSoup.org. Um, we do have some other websites like our forums and our blog website. Um, those will not have the bubbles. Purely is going to be on the TechSoup support and TechSoup.org. So something to keep in mind too, if you're in like our forums, which is a great resource to go in and see what other people are talking about, ask questions. There is a TechSoup pro, uh, product support um, section where members kind of help each other out. I personally in there quite a bit answering questions, um, but there's no help bubble. So as long as you're seeing that help bubble, um, it and that's going to always be there, whether chat's open or not. This is another way to get into TechSoup support. And once you're in there, as long as our, you know, our live chat's open, which you do see in that black header, there are hours listed there. You, um, as long as you type something in and give it a minute, it will give you the option to get in touch. And when you click on that, it will get you going with getting in touch with us via the live chat. So this is a kind of a new way of doing it. There was a live chat button before. It's now prompting you and helping you connect with some resources. So you don't have to sit in our queue waiting for someone to con um to reach out to you. Um, I will say our live chat is completely staffed by people. We do not use AI. We do have some prompts that start you off and give you some information and link you to stuff. But when you start the live chat and it tells your representatives joined, that is a real person. It's someone from my team. Um, we are a nonprofit ourselves. You know, we have our own limited resources. So we do ask our members to be patient. We try to get to our chats as quickly as possible, but we do sometimes have long wait periods depending on on the time of year, um, you know, beginning of the new fiscal year for a lot of folks in July. So it was quite busy about a month ago, um, things along those lines. So just something to keep in mind is that we will get to you. We do recommend typing something in every once in a while just so your browser doesn't time anything out. And um, you will be connected with a real person, not an AI bot or anything like that. So, and that should be the end of my presentation, I believe. I'm going to hand this off to Mr. Kevin Mulhall. Uh, thanks so much, Nick, and hope everyone's having a fabulous week and uh, look forward to working with you in the future. Great. And yeah, here comes Kevin, um, and he's going to touch on some of the um, customer success and um, elements that uh, his team can help you with. And um, both he and Kelly obviously have been engaging with a bunch of people in chat already. So thank you both for doing all that. Thanks, Nick. Um, I'm not sure if my video is working. I've been trying to play with it in the background, but as long as everybody can hear my voice, we can um, see that's... you. Oh, perfect. Um, actually, I was going to spare you all the my late or early afternoon look. Um, so I'm really kind of the quickest thing here. Um, Nick and Kelly have literally softballed um, what I wanted to talk about to me. So <laughs> really, again, what they had stated, um, we are are kind of that extension of the areas that Kelly's team covers um, in that we operate as a very small group, very small, um, but we have the ability to engage with organizations uh, at a deeper level about a variety of things. Um, the first area to note is, is um, we are directly accessible in an ongoing capacity as a part of Quad. Um, it's not something that is directly expressed. Um, but it is an area in which we lie. Um, for example, I saw several uh, Google uh, questions. Guess who runs uh, the Google for Nonprofits Quad Community Space? This guy. Um, so there's a lot of awesome conversations that are happening there, um, but they happen through that specifically through that community um, and that platform. Um, so just to go over really quickly, uh, some of the other uh, services, value adds that um, we do currently do for uh, members that are within Quad, 
um, are around things like technology audits. I saw several uh, chat questions um, around technologies, specific um, uh, products and solutions around uh, migration, integration, et cetera. Uh, we are absolutely, we love to have conversations about organizations IT stack. And Nick actually brought up something earlier, um, IT lifecycle, probably the least thought about thing operationally, understandable, donors, your programs are more important, but technology makes that happen. So you probably wanna talk to us. Things like requests for proposals and scopes of work, um, general grant and fundraising strategy. There was an application that was pinged in earlier um, that actually is a good tool. It's not, they're not um, associated with TechSoup, but there are some tools um, as awesome as our catalog is. Um, we are not necessarily uh, an end-all be-all, and we understand that um, that other organiz or that other products are out there, and, and we will certainly um, make you aware of those. The other piece um, is around the development enhancement of your network. Um, Steve actually brought in a very good uh, question. This is wild how perfect these conversations have been. Um, most people would probably not know what a, for example, what a TechSoup Connect chapter is. Um, that's okay um, it, because that's what we're here for. We're here to connect with you so that you understand the whole landscape of TechSoup. Account management has the things that uh, it has to deal with. We're in a cool space that we get to touch every piece and part, occasionally work with Nick, occasionally work with program managers, et cetera. So we kind of can liaison between those. Um, and then non-managed advisory services. Um, we are not an MSP. Um, as, as much as we would love to help you from end to end on a, say, Google to Microsoft or Microsoft to Google migration, uh, we have... Um, deliverables, uh, documentation, resources that we can provide. We are not going to do it for you. Um, we're happy to kind of give you some additional guidelines uh, around the planning process and the execution piece, but we will not physically do it. These are very involved processes for which many hours are spent. Do we have the people that can help you support that? Absolutely. Consultant Connection, which was uh, discussed earlier, we have um, dedicated uh, organizations, managed uh, IT providers that we've worked with for a very long time, all of which are extremely competent and capable of handling those. Our team would be there to triage what the support is and to give you some options as you go forward based on things like the time to delivery as well as your budget. So that's it for me. So I'll kick it back to you, Nick. All right, great. Well, thanks everybody for your patience and time today. We've gone right up to the edge of the hour. Um, as I said, you will get a copy of this deck through email. It has the live links in it to the various um, to the various pages that I shared uh, during the presentation. Um, and, and again, I, just to say thank you very much for you know committing to working in the nonprofit industry and you know, trying to do your part to help make a better world, to help strengthen your community. Um, we are here to help in any way that we can with technology. Um, the first step is that you do need to join TechSoup and to add your nonprofit's information. So um, if you've not already done that, please take that first step. We can't help you with anything until you've done that. But once you have, um, you know, there's a whole world here of technology assistance, support, products, and services um, that are available to you. Um, and, uh, we, uh, we really appreciate your time and attention today. So, um, have a great rest of your day. Watch out for that email and thank you.